who trained you for uh, professional wrestling? Well, there were a couple of people. One was Joe Pazendak, who was a old timer from the old school. And I was with him for a while. And then he happened to live in Minneapolis. And then uh, I, uh, next stop was Vern. And uh, then uh, the rest of the story is that I started wrestling. And here I am today. How difficult was it to get into the business when you started? Well, Minnesota was a little tougher than most. Vern Gagne was a type of a promoter and a type of trainer that he wanted guys that was gonna put something into it, pay the price, and uh, that was his attitude, in fact, till the day he died. Uh, he always wanted to be number one, it didn't work out that way, but uh, I answer your question, uh, uh, it wasn't easy. I had a referee for a while, and eventually, after I trained long enough and hard enough, I finally got my first match. By the way, which was with uh, uh, Woods. Okay, Mr. Wrestler? Yeah. And uh, how did you become friends with Harley Race? Harley came to Minnesota to uh, wrestle on television. And I'd never seen him before, but he came in and he looked good. And, so we just got together talking, we've become friends, and we've been friends ever since. So it's, it's really worked well. And we, uh, uh, we never had a bad word amongst us. Traveled a lot of miles together all over the world. And uh, he's a good guy to have as a tag team partner. Now, everyone always says he's one of the toughest wrestlers ever inside and outside the ring. Uh, why does everyone say he was so tough? Who? Harley, like why did everyone consider him so tough? Well, he, he was a wrestler, but he was also just a tough guy. One of them tough street fighting guys and hard to take down, had a great punch. Right. So he could hold his own. And you feuded with uh, Bruiser and Crusher. What was it like to uh, face those two legends? Oh, we wrestled them in Chicago and Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Winnipeg, San Francisco. We went. Uh, they were uh, they were a team that were pretty well matched. Not too much wrestling, but a lot of kicking and slamming and slapping. And, and when you fought Vern Gagne in matches, was that more wrestling-based matches? Yeah, there was there was more than normal. And is it true that uh, you had Rowdy, Rowdy Roddy Piper's first match? Yes, that's in Winnipeg. Short match. Did you uh, think anything of, of him at the time? Did you think he made Well, I didn't know him. I, I got in the ring and uh, here comes this kid. And it didn't only last about 27 seconds. I, I tell him uh, that uh, it would have been less, but I had to stop and tie my shoes. And you had a serious injury in a match against Johnny Powers. Can you tell us what happened there? Well, I had my knee busted out. And I was out for a year and a half at least. Yeah, that's uh, that was the killer for our tag team. You know, Harley had to move on, and so he moved on, and everything he did turned out well. So, and you also teamed with uh, Dusty Rhodes. Yes. Uh, how did you enjoy that? Well, he's a character. You know, yeah. very good on interviews. Yeah, he, not much wrestling, but uh, he was a good showboat guy. What was he like outside of the ring? Uh, uh, he was a fun guy. He liked to drink beer and he liked to party. And you also worked with uh, Bobby Heenan a lot. He managed you sometimes and I believe you worked with him. In Bobby and I are still good friends and he managed Kurt, Mr. Perfect. So he's probably one of the best managers that ever was. So. Are you the one that trained your son, Kurt? Uh, well, he'd been around it all his life. So he started in high school. You started in grade school, actually, and then wrestled through high school. Yeah, so he, he had a lot of good basic training. Did you enjoy the tag team matches that you had with him in AWA? Oh, yeah. Uh, one good match stands out. It was with the Road Warriors. I told him, I said, you know, you can't beat me and you can't catch him. What were they like to work at that time? Because they were still... They were just like, tough kids. Not much yeah. wrestling, but... 
they pound you to death, you know. I remember seeing one match uh, where Kurt got caught in the ropes and they smashed his head with a chair and there seemed like a riot almost broke out. Uh, and I think it was in Indiana or somewhere. It was, it was close. Yeah. Were riots more common in your day? Well, yeah, there was, security was different. Yeah. Now you can't pretty much stay in your seat situation. Uh, what was your favorite match of your son's of all the matches that you're I think had. the one they had with Nick Bachwinkel and Stu uh, and Hart. And uh, his son, now your grandson, is now in WWE as yeah. Curtis Axel. Yeah, uh, he just signed a contract. They renewed it, so he should be, he's about ready for the big seat in the first wheel pretty soon. Do you, so do you watch his matches, obviously? I yeah, assume. yeah, when he's on, yeah, I know. He had 40. Uh, 40 days, he had four days off. And that was in uh, Europe and in Asia and Hawaii. And they're, they're moving. Now they're going into China, so that's a billion people. And uh, you had a lot of contact with Mad Dog Vashon over the years. Yes. Uh, what did you think of him? As oh, a that person? was good. He's a little bulldog guy. Tough guy, tough kid, yeah, tough. Were you on the airplane the time that he uh, opened the door on the airplane? No, but I, I was uh, I was around and I had heard about it. Not too, uh, not too good of an idea. No. Uh, did you know uh, Jesse Ventura much when he was uh, in the yeah. AWA? Yeah, I had several matches. But what did you think of him as governor? Good talker. Not so much wrestling, but good talker. Good talk his way into situations. That, did you vote for him when he ran for oh, yeah. I was there. I was there when he, uh, he was out at the uh, racetrack and uh, when the final returns were coming in. And Kurt and I was out there with him. So. And uh, what was your personal favorite match over the years that you had? You had so many great matches. Well, that's hard to say. Uh, probably with Billy Robinson. Uh, I like more wrestling, but there were so many of them, it'd be really hard for me to pin one down. Did you get along well with Billy Robinson outside the ring? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, as far as business was concerned and stuff, you know, when it was over, they go his way, I go my way. So I had, I had no personal stuff with him, but uh, mm -hmm. I know that he worked hard, trained hard. You, you were know. always known for being very strong. Uh, yeah. What was well, he your... come from the old school. Yeah. Came from England there, you know. He, so. And uh, you yourself were known for being like very strong and powerful in the ring. What were some of your uh, your strength lifts in the gym? In well, the I was. I had more. I didn't have any aerial stuff. Mine was all surface transportation. Oh, okay. And I was more of a puller and a tugger, but. I also was a state champion. It, it started in Minnesota, so that's my background there. So, uh, I, I had, a, from both schools, I had a little bit of everything. I had power, I had strength, I had knowledge, I was smart, and those things are very important if you're gonna make money in this business. Yes. And uh, were you disappointed when the AWA went out of business since you played such a big role in it throughout the well, year? Well, not really. You know, Vern had a chance. Uh, Vince asked him to buy him out, and Vern says, no, you got to get my deal. Well, following week, <laughs> uh, Vince was in the TV station. But he asked, he did ask Vern first to buy him out. $15 million for his territory. He said, are you kidding? You know, so he, he didn't want to go out as a, as a sold his business. He wanted to go out on top and then work out that way for him. And what did you think of his son Greg as a performer? Yeah, he was a good athlete and everything, but light guy, just a small guy. You and gotta have some meat on your bones. To, but after I see last night and some of the stuff that's going on here, you know, I wonder, you know, some of them guys couldn't weigh 100 pounds, 120 pounds. Yeah, what do you think of today's wrestling? Now it's a lot of small wrestlers. Well, uh, these are promoters that are charging these guys a lot of money. Give them a few matches. And, but you figure it out for yourself. Where are they going? 
there, they won't be in Vince's office. And he's the head guy. You know, he owns the big Ferris wheel and all the seats. And uh, finally, is there anything you want to say to your fans and your son's fans who might uh, watch this interview? Well, yeah, first of all, I want you to know that uh, Kurt was, uh, was without a doubt the greatest athlete in professional wrestling ever. And his son, Joe, is just waiting for a break now. And he's got good background, he's got good moves, he's a smart kid, so I want you to watch for Curtis Axel in the future because... And I've actually seen your granddaughter wrestle probably around 2008. Is she out of the business yeah, now? Yeah, she got it as a baby. Okay. He's got the Hulk. Or <laughs> I got 25 grandkids, so... And I, uh, I have trouble with names, so I gave them numbers. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We appreciate having you Well, thank you, you. You bet.